Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Woo. Wow. Something my 10-year-old daughter said to me that completely caught me off guard to the point I, I literally almost had to pull the car over and start crying. Hey everybody, Joe Simons, like diamonds, back again, salt strong, unchurched, and this is going to be a, a, a powerful message, uh, a, a true story that just happened to me here this uh, this week, and, uh, and and certainly caught me off guard, and, and also gave me just an instant reminder that I was doing something wrong. And, and I'm willing to bet maybe some of you is uh, as well. So the kind of the background on my my daughter, Shauna, she's 10 years old. She is super independent. You know, everyone you know says their kids are unique or different. Uh, she is. If you've met her, you, you know. I mean, she's got, you know, her own little YouTube channel what, called Shauna the Nature Girl and just loves everything nature and just is, is um, almost freakishly independent to, to the point you know, when she was seven years old, seven, so she had a four-year-old sister and what a two-year-old, one-year-old brother at the time. And uh, she said that uh, we were talking about, you know, getting babysitters. This is a seven-year-old, by the way. And and she quickly chimes in to, to my wife and I, and she says, uh, well, guys, like, you guys can leave me here alone, you know. She was like, i and we're like looking at her and she's like, well, I know where you keep some of your money. I know where Publix is. I know how to drive a car. I've been watching you guys long enough. I could definitely take care of everybody. And, and Lauren and I were obviously dying laughing. But at the same point, we're like, you know what? She's probably right. I mean, it, it's seven and eight. She was feeding her uh, her other you know, siblings, like waking up early and making all their cereal and oatmeal and stuff for them, you know, just learn how to get a stool and do the microwave. Completely different. Like our, our other daughter, Savannah, who is seven. I mean, she should learn how to tie her shoes. I mean, just to give you an idea of, of how different they are. I mean, uh, she's just crazy independent and, and also stubborn. Um, you know, pr- probably like uh, myself, uh, I'm gonna I'm not going to, uh, even though Lauren may or may not be listening to this, I'm not going to say it's from her side. It's probably me, you know, just a little bit stubborn in their in their ways and kind of get set in their ways. And, and, and why that's important is, you know, we were, we were pretty actively going to church, you know, before COVID. And the number one reason that it was always tough is because of Shauna, you know, and, and it's tough. I, I remember being that age. I did not want to go to church with my parents. It was a nuisance. It was the last thing I wanted to do on Sunday. I wanted to enjoy my day. I had some, you know, friends that did not go to church. And I was like, man, I wish I could be like them and, and you know, get there to sit there and play Nintendo and do other things that that uh, 10 year olds were doing at the time. So I, I get it. But it was it was tough. And if you've been there before, uh, with your own kids or grandkids, you know, it's just like, gosh, you know, it's already tough enough sometimes on Sunday morning to get everybody ready. And then when you have one kid or two or three, but she in particular, that was literally doing everything possible to make us late so that she wouldn't have to go, right? I mean, purposely sleeping in, going back to bed, you know, spilling stuff all over her clothes, knowing that we'd have to change, like just, you could tell she was like trying to sabotage us going to church. And and for a little while, you know, wasn't really interested in 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 us praying and and just just kind of being a little bit of a distraction. So I tell you all that because it, it sets up the story for what happened next. So you know, because of all that, and because of how tough she's been about church and and praying and and God, we uh we we kind of just started pouring a lot of love into Savannah and Jackson. You know, I think as parents sometimes you're like, well, man, maybe I maybe I screwed this one up, or not not to say it was almost too late, but you you know you make a split second decision and say you know what let's let's make sure this doesn't happen to the other ones let's start really pouring in a ton of of prayer and 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 uh and and love and uh bible verses and stuff into into them and so we did and uh you know if you guys have multiple kids especially once you have three it's not man to man anymore it's you're playing all kinds of coverage and uh so at nighttime you know over the past i don't know really handful of months you know we've um 
I'll just be honest with you. We, we, we've, we've kind of let Shauna do her own thing. And, you know, she's really big into reading and, and doing, she literally takes her mag light and her lights out and goes exploring for animals at nighttime. Uh, we live on a, you know, a few acres and so there's in a bunch of trees and, uh, little holes and cubbies and places for animals to hide. And she literally loves that. And so the other kids go to bed early and, you know, we say our, our prayers to them and, and spend some time with them, each of them in their, in their bed. Um, and it's been a real special time. So with Shauna, we, we had, you know, she gets in a little bit later and this is kind of my time with Lauren and we're kind of hanging out and doing our thing. And then Shauna kinds to go to bed. So all that being said, we're in the car and now at age 10, we got Christmas coming up and, you know, a lot of her friends at age 10 either have their own phone now. That's, a, you know, that's what's happening. I, I never, I, I, I thought it was going to be more like 12, but it's happening at nine and 10 and, and obviously early for some people and, um, and either their own phone and or their own tablet. And, and she has z- neither. We have one TV in our entire house, uh, just to put it in perspective. So, we, you know, and we want her outside. We love that part of it. And, and we're giving her some time on the computer. Uh, obviously, I think you, if you don't give your kids any time on the computer, they're also, they're going to be way behind when everyone else is literally running their lives and businesses on a computer. Uh, so I think you need to have a balance. But we've been trying to really, really limit the amount of that overall screen time for the kids. So obviously, my my answer was no. We're not getting you a phone or a tablet. And so she's she's persistent. And she's she's very probably will be a good salesperson at some day. And she's trying every angle possible about how this is going to help her help her succeed and and what she's going to do with this tablet or phone. It's not just going to be for you know playing games and and texting and stuff. That you know she's really going to be doing mathematics and and you know all this stuff. And so I'm just kind of smiling. And, uh, and, and my answer is just like, Shauna, no, maybe next year we'll revisit it. But right now you're not at the point where you need a phone. Um, you know, we might get you a dumb phone, meaning something that only can text, uh, like for emergencies, if that ever comes up. But right now we haven't even had that yet. So the answer is no. And so she's now like going on this just sob story train of all the, she doesn't get anything her friends get. You probably all have heard it. You've probably all done it to your own parents. I know I sure did. And I'm just sitting here now, like just revisiting the past. Like, man, my parents, uh, they must've had a lot of patience with me. Cause I, I know I was doing this exact same thing. So uh, the you know the, this uh, barrage of different questions and things from her keep going back and forth and she she's like well you never get me anything you know you've you've well she said something about you like you um you you let me down and I was like oh really I was like well tell me something else I've let you down she's like oh it's tons of things I was like all right name one thing that I've let you down on that you really need. And it was kind of quiet in the car, and I, I thought I kind of had stumped her. And all of a sudden, she says, "Why did you stop praying for me?" <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! And, and it hit me. I was like, "What?" And and she's like, well, "Well, you let me down. You stop. You stop praying for me at night." And uh, I I'm tearing up talking about. It. I was just like, "Whoa, what? What do you mean?" And and she's like, "Well, you, I know you pray to Savannah and Jackson every night. You, you stop praying to me. Like you let me down there." And I was like, "Whoa!" So I, I almost had to pull the car. Over. I'm like, "I'm like, wow." I mean, wow. The the one child that I thought didn't want anything to do with that, and 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 it's the first thing that she brought up out of all the things she probably could have said. I'm sure I've let her down in her eyes about not buying her certain things or letting her do certain things for her own her own good and safety and she brings up the fact that I've, I've stopped praying over her. And so it hit me, with all, you know, the whole rest of the drive home, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly kind of quiet and dumbfounded. And I'm like, wow, you know, we're called as, as Christians to, to share the word of Christ to everyone, especially our own family, especially our children. And yet here, my wife and I had, had kind of forgotten our oldest child, um, not not out of any reason of hatred or anything, just life getting in the way and we're busy. And we had two other ones that were kind of into it and she always was not into it. And uh, so I, I told her right then and there, I was like, all right, you have my word. I'm going to pray over you every night. Uh, and I, I did say, you know, your mom and I pray 
uh, about you every single night when we say our prayers, just so you know, and uh, and maybe our prayers have been answered. You know, that was uh, has been a challenge with her. Uh, you know, becoming closer to Christ. And I'm sure a lot of you have children like that. Maybe they're adults and, and they're kind of wandering off. Uh, I know I, I certainly did. And I know my parents said a lot of prayers over me in, in my 20s and, and 30s uh, when, when I, you know, probably wasn't as close as I, uh, as I should have been to, to God. And so, um, wow, it was just such a great reminder that, you know, regardless of what we think is going on in someone else's head or their feelings or their thoughts, it's up to us to not just exude love and, and to to treat them just like Jesus would, but to actually pray over them and uh, and ask if you can pray for them. I I, I had a guy in C12 who said, I, I asked to literally, I don't care if they're atheists. I just said, hey, what's one thing I could do to pray over you? And he's like, it's amazing. Not a single person in 30 years of me asking that has said, no, I don't want you to pray over me. Not a single person. Uh, including, you know, all kinds of of different uh, people with different backgrounds and religions and beliefs, and uh, and usually every single person has one thing going on in their life that they quickly say, you know, what my my, my father, my mother is is really struggling right now, health wise, they're in hospice or they're dying or it's cancer or uh, you know it's a relationship or it's money. It's it's usually something along those lines, right? Or my 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 health and. Um, it's interesting when you just have that conversation, what opens up, right? And and here I was neglecting our, our oldest daughter uh, just because life got in the way and I didn't think that she wanted it. And here she is. It's the number one thing that she said that she missed. And I said, wow, the, the, the just pure power of that is a father. And, and I'm sure is is our father looking down, it's probably smiled as well. And maybe that was our prayer being answered. I, I don't know. Um, I, it, you know, it's easy to get down on yourself and, and regret. And I don't do that. You know, I was like, man, it is what it is. I can't go change the past. Let's focus on the future, right? And and that's probably one of the bigger messages here is on top of obviously not neglecting your family and not neglecting your friends and not neglecting just to talk about your love of Christ and, and why you believe in God and uh, just open up conversations. But, but to, uh, you know, be, be bold, be, uh, be incredibly bold and don't live in the past. Only you can only change what's happened in the future. And that's the beauty of, of, of everything that I've read in the Bible is God forgives, Jesus forgives. And, uh, you know, regardless of your past, if you're willing to, to to be open to uh, to God and to welcome it in your heart, it's uh, it, it all the stuff in the past is completely irrelevant. So even though we've uh, we've probably not probably we have done a poor job of praying uh, with Shauna, not over Shauna, I guess is the right term. I, praying with Shauna one on one at night, uh, you know, it doesn't matter in the past. We can we can focus on the future, and she's ten years old and got the whole world ahead of her and. Uh, and, and I'm excited to do it again. I'm excited that she's excited. In the, in the past few nights, you know, I have been personally going in there and, uh, and praying with her, and, uh, and it's been real special. And, and now I know she actually appreciates this. What's even, even cooler for me as a, as a dad. So um, I, I hope that story resonated with some of you, and maybe you've got some kids out there you haven't talked to in a while about this. Uh, we've had some employees, you know, at Salt Strong, it's big and bold right there on our about page in our mission statement. Uh, we, we mentioned the word God and Jesus Christ, that, that we honor him and everything that we do. And we've had a few employees and, you know, some contractors and stuff that that we were 100% knew they were not Christian. And, and then we're fine with that. I think we're called as Christians to not just surround ourselves with other Christians, but to to go out there and, and, uh, and, and, to, and to, you know, recruit, if you will, and, and talk to other people and to love on other people and show them what, what God's love is like. And uh, I've had multiple times where I was almost like, and you know what I'm talking about, when you're with someone who you know has different beliefs and you kind of don't even want to bring it up. And every time I've brought it up, or sometimes they brought it up, it's like, man, I, I wish you would you'd talk to me a little bit more about this. I, I, I'm very interested. And I'm intrigued. And one person actually said, this just feels like an uh, like working with you guys is like an open invitation. It's something that I've, I didn't have growing up. And, and I, I'm, I'm really curious about it. And you guys seem super happy and super nice and loving. And I, I'm, I'm attracted to that. I, I kind of, and this is someone that I didn't even, I was like ashamed to even bring up like, Hey, I hope you haven't checked out our about page. Cause we're Christians. And this person who was not a Christian had said, man, I just, it feels like I'm God's like leading me you guys like an open invitation. 
to 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 learn more about this. And so it's like, wow, here we are, stubborn knuckleheads, and uh, and, and God just wants us to, to talk about them. That's it. That's really that's the whole lesson here, right? And and not not worry about what other people are going to think. Not worry about their beliefs. It, it it it's not up to you to to save them per se you know and some people said what are you gonna what is your own church gonna save me and i i can't save you you got to save yourself god's got to save you i i can't sit here and and just say one word to you and all of a sudden you're just automatically saved i i i think that uh you know is uh is christians all we can do is is share what we know what we believe what our experiences have been with with god and uh, and 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 then let God do the rest. Let God work on their heart, right? Let uh, and sometimes it's not going to go well. I've I've had some experiences that that have not gone as as well, and end up in a you know a little bit of debate. And you know the best thing to do is is just pray over that that person or those people, and and do pray that that uh, once again that you're not going to save them personally. That you know whatever you said is going to stick with them, or whatever you might have said, whatever God put in in your heart and in your voice that day. Is is somehow going to resonate with them, and maybe they think about it a week, a year later, and and all of a sudden, you know, become uh, interested in uh, in learning again. So, long story short, uh, all you can do is continue to talk about it, to to especially pray over and with your loved ones, and uh, and don't ever you know take for granted uh, what you're doing. It, it could have a lot of power. And uh, here we are with a ten year old who I thought was poo-pooing on the whole idea of all this. And it's the one thing she set our letter down on. Wow. So you're going to probably understand why it was a uh, 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 gut-wrenching and also uh, exciting, uh, you know, kind of a thing to hear from uh, from your daughter. Uh, I, I'd much rather she say that uh, so I know uh, that where I need to improve than that she said, oh, I, you know, let her down by you not know, buying p90x or whatever it is so uh i'm very very blessed and, and blessed to have all you amazing listeners and um this unchurched it just keeps exploding and um it, it, I, and I can't explain it i mean it can only be a god thing you know and i'll just give you an example you know we we send out uh, our blast email to seventy eight thousand people with the other podcast with the fishing podcast that's what people sign up for and uh, and I, I want to be respectful of that, uh, but at the same point, this you know, even this this message here today has got me wondering. Maybe I should blast out the unchurched to, to everybody again. But here's what's interesting: these unchurched episodes are getting just as many downloads. It, like I mean, sometimes tens of thousands is the ones that we email out, email out to seventy some thousand people, and these don't get emailed out. It's like how are people finding this? It 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 it, it doesn't. It doesn't make sense in the terms of of normal downloads and content. So thank you guys. Thank you for obviously you're sharing it with friends and people. Thank you so much for sharing it and for all the the review, the five star reviews and the subscribes. Thank you guys so much. And uh, it means uh, it, it means the world to this the overall kingdom. Not 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 really me so much. Uh, I'm just I'm I'm blown away that God's able to speak through me and and uh, and it resonates with the right people. And that's what I pray over every single time before I get on here is that. Even if it's just one person, God, let, let this message just knock them off their feet and know they need to do something, just like that message from my daughter Shauna to me did. Talk about an eye-opener. So, guys, I love you. If you have any thoughts, questions, or uh, just want to reach out and uh, and and tell me what you think about episodes or future things you want to discuss or prayer requests, let me know. Joe at saltstrong.com. It's a private email to me only. I, I try to get back to everyone. And uh, Joe at saltstrong.com. I'll talk to you on the next episode. Cause fishing, it's in my soul, it was past